Hello guys and welcome to another plastic model building video on my channel. I was really glad to see the positive feedback on the previous build, the Flag Fearing Aachen Dreizig, and although it didn't really perform good in terms of view counts, I decided to build and record another model. I'll be start assembling 1x48 Mitsubishi Reishiki Kanjo Sentoki by Tamiya, often known as the infamous Zero Fighter. Now, the fighter is popular enough to the point I don't really need to explain any detail to you guys, but I'll just do a short introduction of the plane and its history. Zero Fighter was the main workhorse of the Imperial Japanese Navy during the World War II. It started its career against Chinese fighter in the Continental Front all the way up to the end of the war. With its impressive maneuverability and cruising range of up to 3,000 kilometers, it proved no match against Soviet fighters piloted by Chinese, Spitfires over Port Darwin, and early US fighters. However, with the IGN failing to produce a successor to the Zero Fighter, it later became an easy target being outnumbered, outgunned, and outpowered against US carrier-borne fighters. This model by Tamiya is known to be the best 1x48 Zero Plastic kit available in the market today. It's easy to build, well detailed, and relatively cheap with the price tag of $25. That's as expensive as the Flak Fearling we built in the last episode. Opening the box, we have few plastic liners, clear parts for the canopy, a decal and photo etch parts, a history leaflet about the plane, painting guide, and finally, an instruction sheet. Unlike ground-based models such as tanks, SPG, and artillery, air models requires you to first assemble and paint the cockpit before gluing the fuselage. You will only be able to see tiny bits of cockpit after finishing the entire build, but since it is the heart of the plane, I spent a lot of time carefully assembling the cockpit. Roughly 25 parts will go together to replicate 1x48 Zero cockpit, which is only about 4cm in size. I won't be mounting a pilot for this build, so I need to make myself a seat belt or safety belt as IGM preferred to call. The kit instruction is to use the decal, but since the decal is so thin, it lacks reality. I ended up purchasing IGN safety belt set by Feinmold, which includes 4 belts with $10 price tag. After finishing the side consoles, all the parts required for cockpit assembly is here. I've also decided to finish building the A Type 12 engine as well. You can get great detail just by using the default parts available, but I added 14 plug codes using 0.2mm soft wires. These were attached to the engine and its cylinder using 0.3mm pin vise and glued using a semidyne. Once that is finished, I move on to painting the cockpit and the engine. After finishing the base coat using Mr. Color number 127 for the cockpit and 125 for the engine, I applied a single wash using petrol and brown paint. This will help highlight the moles of the cockpit using the capillary action. I dry the wash for a day and later wipe off the excess paint using paper towels and cotton. Once that is done, it's time to start painting the detail using Tamiya enamelic paint. Tip of the engine cylinders were painted with silver, plug codes with copper, with flat white applied to the connection circle. Same is done to the cockpit. Be aware that some of the colors shown here is not necessarily historically accurate. For example, the switches for the radio and navigation weren't painted in white, but I did it anyway so the detail would stand out more bright. As a semi-final step, I apply dry brush using olive drop mixed with flat white. Finally, it's time to think about the cockpit instruments. The kit comes with extra detailed decals to glue it to the instrument panels. However, I'm not sure whether this is because of the decals being old or my skill being bad. I had a very hard time sticking them correctly to the cockpit. So I've decided to paint the panels using extra small brush instead of using the decals. 
First, I painted the entire panels with semi-gloss black. The reason I'm using gloss paint, not the flat paint, is to replicate the glass in front of each panels. After that is done, casing of each panels were painted in white. Except for the furthest left being painted in red. Again, not historical, but it looks better that way. Finally, using the same white paint, I added meters and horizontal indicator to the instrument panels. Painting process for both cockpit and engine is now finished. In the next episode, I'll be assembling the fuselage and the wings, as well as start thinking about how I should display the finished model. Hope you guys enjoyed the video as always, have a great year in case this turns out to be the last video for this year, and I'll see you guys in the next one.